Hello, welcome back to another video and this is a follow-up to our previous video. I was meant to do this earlier, just had been held up, but this is um, talking about upper body exercises using isometric training uh, tempos to, you know, increase more increased joint stability than muscular strength. So one of the first exercises I'll use, and we'll have a look at it while I'm talking about it, is like a regression of a push-up. Now, I could obviously use the push-up. You can see here Mel's holding a little pause at the bottom of the movement there. Um, I could easily use just a push-up, but often the push-up is very hard, especially with these joint stability problems. So um, also cable presses and chest presses with dumbbells uh, can be a little bit too aggressive. So I sort of ne need something that's like a transitional movement that applies some load and some tension, but without it being overly compressive in the joint. So this is one example of where I can use like a TRX or a suspension system to um, modify, you know, the range of motion that I might be trying to achieve um, and very sort of subtly add the intention, you know, add some strength and stability to the movement. Um, as I mentioned in my previous video with the leg one, if you haven't watched it, go back and check it out. It's very important when you're trying to rebuild tendon, uh, you know, the structure of the tendons to so they don't rupture again and, um, you know, how they build like little cross-patterning weaving. Um, it's very important for, to do these sort of tempos. It's often though overlooked by many people. So if I could just go back, normally like the this video is in uh, half the speed of what it normally is, but I might have like a three to five second hold. So it's sort of like, a, you know, two to three seconds to come down, maybe even five, and then three to five to hold it, and then I just push straight out of it. The position where you get to stand, you can modify that to find where there's a level of challenge that can, you know, that it's there, but it doesn't sort of force you into losing form. So you can really modify this quite easily, as opposed to the push-up on the floor, you really only got the other option is to, to go from either to on your toes or on your knees, where this one I can really modify the, a lot more specifically to that, what that person, person needs. So this is just one example of where I could use this. I really could use isometric training in any exercise, but what I'm trying to show you here is the choices of the exercise are usually used for a specific reason that, and that the the intended exercise that I really want to get to is too difficult or it's too risky. So I'm trying to find an alternative to, to one that's too easy uh, that, that can give me everything I'm looking for so that eventually I can rebuild the strength into there and move to the either the standard push-up or the chest presses and the various pushing movements that I really want to do with normal tempos and, and, and a lot more load so I can build the strength into it that I'm looking for. All right, so let's have a look at another example. Okay, so here's the next exercise you could use. Remembering I don't have, it, these are not the only ones I could use pretty much any exercise, but like I said earlier, I, I usually try to stick with something simple because the reason I'm using this type of training method is because there's some sort of problem or a, want to really specifically build some strength without the risk of load uh, becoming a factor and causing potential problems. So this is just the basic single arm cable pull. Um, you know, and I'm just emphasizing the, uh, the holding uh, pattern right at the, the end part of the movement there. So it's where I can really um, use the strength in the, my upper back area to hold it. Basically, it's the opposite of the chest press, but the single arm cable pull, I get a bit more mobility, a bit more freedom in the movement. Uh, it's a lot easier to control, very little risk. You know, now if, now if I wanted to sort of take it up a notch, I could easily um, uh, just load it up with with a double handed version of the same thing. So, you know, but usually I'll start with the single, and then if if I'm feeling like I want to get a bit more out of it, I'll go to the the double handed one, which is what I'll show you now. Um, don't quite have as much freedom in this, so you might need to put the weight down a little bit. If you, you always remember, you need because of the holding pattern, you really do need to have it a bit lighter. All right, so 
With two arms it does bring an extra amount of load and you can really get that scapular retraction working for you there. You also want to make sure that you have like a bit of a, a very good body position. You see how I've sort of uh, bent over a little bit more. First one I was a little bit too upright. You don't want to have any hyperextension in the lower back when you do this. So you want to really uh, be locked into this really stable um, lower body position so that you, you can have that holding pattern right there. All right, so that would be the opposite of the pushing stuff uh, in the horizontal position. Again, a lot of this time we're using this because of shoulder injuries, neck problems, elbow problems, all of the above. Um, trying to rebuild some some basic strength before we progress to the heavier loaded stuff. All right, so let's have a look at one more example. Okay, in this example we're going to look at overhead movement. Now, uh, I'm only going to show the, the pushing one. The, the pulling version would be, see, usually I would use a lat pull down. Uh, maybe someone really strong and chin up, but very rarely would I do that. Um, but in this one example, I'm going in a kneeling position just again to simplify the movement. Um, and I'm going to use a kettlebell because it brings in a little bit more instability into the shoulder and I can get this position where my arm rotates a little bit. So you can see how I've got it out to the side, bring it in close, and then I'm just pushing straight overhead, keeping a strong core and getting that nice overhead movement that I'm looking for. So really good scapular movement. Again, the load, load of the kettlebell is quite light, and I have that little pause at the top. Now, where it gets a little bit trickier, and this is where it becomes more elbow and wrist-based. Um, actually, I'll show you the left hand first, but uh, in this particular movement, I've been having a bit of an issue with my left arm, my left shoulder. You can see how it sort of hikes up a little bit more. So I've, I've been having a little bit more problems uh, on my left side, and you'll see that more so in the variation that I'll use. But you see how my hand will rotate at the top. So it's a great, great exercise for um, getting good scapular ro rota uh, rotation and then also good forearm control as well. Now, where I take it up a notch is when I go the upside down kettlebell. And, you know, and again, the isometric part be pretty much the entire way through for my wrist. Um, and my shoulder's working quite hard, as is my core. But, you know, really trying to keep this kettlebell well balanced is quite tricky uh, doing it. So I can go in this double kneeling position. And then if I want to slowly progress to um, to standing positions, then I could go into a half kneeling position. So I can progress into slightly more challenging. Um, and it's because the next position would be like a lunge position. So, and again, see the holding point at the top there. A great way to sort of build some good overhead movement with little risk because the load's quite light. But the, the time sort of creates the tension. So that's the beauty of using the, these uh, holding um, methods. So you can get a comparison where you can see my right, arm, my right hand versus my left hand. My left hand my left hand's been having lots of trouble uh, with my wrist and my fingers as much as my shoulder. So I really struggle to control the kettlebell on this side. And so this is a great choice for me to work through uh, without creating issues by going straight with heavy loaded dumbbells or a barbell. So I learned really sort of picking on my stability more than the uh, overall strength as such. And I'm building the strength by just having the holding pattern there. So a great exercise for those with um, ongoing issues, the elbows, wrists, shoulders these are great ways to sort of build that movement back into your repertoire without little risk all right so that'd be some of my versions of the upper body isometric training that you could use in your training all right hope you've enjoyed those examples and um, check the description for in the links below um, because there's a lot of other things you can check out all right hope you've enjoyed that and we'll see you next time